What's up ladies and gents, this is Casey Kid coming at you with another Destiny video. Today it's Friday, so it's not my day, it's your day. And yes, even though we had a video earlier this morning, we are going to do a Azure video. I was contemplating whether or not I was actually going to put one up because I was like, you know what, I had this Nightfall video that I wanted to put out. I wanted to put it out early this morning and I was going to decide at work if I really wanted to do a Azure video or not. But I decided, you know what, what the heck, Azure's in town. It's 100 times for Azure to come to the tower and we've got to grade him. We have got to grade Azure, so why not? So we're doing a Azure video this week and here he is over by the speaker hanging out alone that's never a good sign but you know what his inventory isn't that bad this week it's really not bad at all for starters on the titans we have the no backup plans these things are starting to see a real resurgence in destiny but you know what maybe resurgence isn't actually the word we should use because nobody used no backup plans in year one they were absolutely garbage with the invention of the taken king though we ended up having our shotgun kills trigger a force barrier, and that pretty much changed the entire game. Now with the universal remote out, that makes these things even a little bit more viable. That force barrier is really strong. So you get one kill, it's going to use your melee override charge, and you can run around with a really strong overshield and hopefully go and kill another guardian. This thing is seeing some use in PvP, but it also has some uses in PvE. I'm going to give these things an A-. minus. They're really good, but it's situational in that 1, you need to be on the Defender Titan, and 2, you need to be using a shotgun. If you have those two things though, these things are a very strong and solid option. Next up, we're moving on to the Hunter for the Graviton Forfeit. These came to the game with the Taken King, and they are amazing to look at. This helmet is really awesome. And this was definitely one of those pieces of gear that people were just dying and trying to farm for. Though that was back whenever you could have two shade steps. Now your shade step has a cooldown between each use. Still, you know, shade step is not dead. It's definitely a viable option. It's not spammable like it used to be, but it is still a definite option for Night Stalkers. And they are obviously still using it. So if you like shade step and you would like keen scout, this is pretty much the way to go. If you're a Night Stalker, it's not like you have tons of options. You can wear this, or you can wear the Grasps. It's up to you if you really like the smoke or this. I'm going to give these an A- as well. The Shade Step nerf hurt just a little bit, but not a ton. It definitely did not kill this exotic piece of helmet gear. So I think it's viable, and it looks amazing. It looks amazing. Shade Step's not dead. Night Stalkers are not dead. <laughs> Moving on to the Warlock, we have the Apotheosis Fail. Now I just want to get this out there, none of these items here are tier 12 capable. If you need to buy something that you're looking for a stat upgrade, the Apotheosis Fail is definitely the best of the bunch. It's not like it's 96% or anything, but it's at least in the 90s compared to the others which really don't come that close. But as far as the Apotheosis Fail, I used to always think this was Voidwalker only. But you actually regenerate your health, you get your grenade and your melee back whenever you cast your super. That's really good! There's a perk on the Stormcaller, Transcendence, that does exactly that. Well, not exactly that. This actually does more. So overall, I think the Apotheosis Veil is actually a pretty solid helmet. It's a little bit more situational in that you need your super to be up in order to reap the benefits. So in PvE, it's probably a little bit more useful because you'll get your super more often than you will in PvP. But it's not that bad. I'm going to give these things a solid B. This might be overlooked a little bit, there might be some better choices on the Warlock, and there probably are, but this thing really isn't that bad. Moving on to our weapon, we have the Zalo Supercell. Now I make no secrets about the fact that this is definitely one of my favorite guns in the game. For starters, it's a primary weapon with a burn, which everybody loves. You also end up having basically chain lightning from your gun. You have a chance to chain lightning amongst the enemies that you're shooting, whether you're killing them or whether they're still alive. Also, if you get double kills, you'll get super energy back and your magazine will be refilled. Really, really solid. Obviously, this is really good for a mobbing gun and really useful in PvE, but honestly, we've done some top 10 Iron Banner videos and a lot of people use this in PvP as well. Definitely better situated for the 6v6 game modes. I love this gun. It is definitely an A, one of the best mobbing guns we've ever had in Destiny. 
and that's right up there with the Fatebringer and the Bad Juju. This gun is really solid. If you don't have one, pick it up. Next, we're moving on to the primary Legacy Ingrams. I always say to avoid these. They're only going to give you year one gear, but if you're looking for that thorn, if you're looking for the last word, if you're looking for the No Land Beyond, or you're looking for the Universal Remote, you might want to pick this up. You might want to pick this up. It's 31 strange coins, it costs a lot, but you definitely have a chance at getting one of those weapons, and then for everything aside from the thorn, you can then buy it from the kiosk and upgrade it into year two. Also, since Thorn is going to be coming with the Rise of Iron in Year 3, who knows if having it as far as a Year 1 version will be useful as far as getting it in Year 3 easier. It probably won't have an effect since Thorn in Year 3 is going to come with a questline, but you never know, it never hurts. Still, that was Jure this week, and for 100 Jures, that one really wasn't that bad. That one was pretty solid overall, you might already have everything that he was selling, because he was selling some things that are really, really popular in the game. But overall, not a bad Jure week. I thought we were really going to get trolled. This was a pretty solid week, especially for newer players. Anyway, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. Check out these awesome videos. Good luck with your raids, your drops, your Jure. And I'll see you around in Destiny. Buying them Legacy. Thorn. Year 3.